Our region's business is sponsored by PNC for the achiever in you. Our region's business, improving our economy, creating jobs, and strengthening communities. Innovation, collaboration, transformation, and the people making it happen. Join us as we take a closer look at our region's business. Now, here's your host, Bill Flanagan. Today on our region's business, if you're having a hard time attracting and retaining talent, we'll tell you what young people are looking for in an employer. Plus, turning to young people to get young people excited about careers in manufacturing. But first, XP, a Pittsburgh startup that's uh, crowdsourcing lessons in science and math to make learning fun and to put them all at the fingertips of anybody with access to the internet. The company is the creation of a Carnegie Mellon professor whose team of high school students just won the International Math Olympiad two years in a row. That's right, a U.S. team won the International Math Competition. Poshan Lowe is with us right now. He's Associate Professor of Mathematics at CMU as well as Head Coach of the U.S. Math Team and Founder of XP. And welcome. Good to have you here. Thank you. It's a real pleasure to be here with you. Yeah, so this is really cool. Really putting, what, in science and math education right at, a, right at a young, anybody's fingertips. Is that what this is all about? Right, right, right. I mean, the main idea is that mathematics is actually something that goes far beyond science, cosines, and logarithms. It helps you make good decisions. Hmm. And so our real vision and our real goal is to help everyone in the United States and the world to be able to learn those math skills that will help them make these great decisions for their own lives. Going well, forward. And you've really brought the whole concept of crowdsourcing into this space about how do you teach, how do you learn, how does that work? Definitely. So you and I are different. Every viewer watching this show has a different thing going through their head right now. This diversity, diversity of thought, is actually what makes our human race so wonderful, in fact, so creative. So our philosophy was, if we could take what was going on in the education sector and allow there to be a diversity of ways to learn any particular concept, that would be a way to connect with each person on their own wavelength. Mm -hmm. So now the crowdsourcing aspect is, I actually don't know what's the best way to explain to a student who grew up from a background that was different from my own. Mm -hmm. But if we invite everyone from every background to share the way that they would explain something, then we'll have a far richer way of learning that can appeal to each person on their wavelength. Then with crowdsourcing, you can pull in different ways to explain. And in fact, there's another piece. We're not only about crowdsourcing. We use algorithms. It's, uh, some people w could call it artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. or maybe I would call it statistics. We measure how people are interacting with the practice problems and the explanations so that we can even sequence the content that we provide to optimize for each person's personal learning. So you don't have to wade through, well, here's 50 different ways of teaching how to solve this problem, and you're going to optimize it. Oh, you would probably, you might do best with this particular exploitation or that, that So, explanation, Bill, you right? hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Uh, the basic idea is that if we think about how education is structured today, you imagine school, and you visualize 30 students and a teacher trying their best to adapt the lesson to 30 people who are all thinking about different things and at different stages. Hmm. That teacher is trying. I mean, I'll say not just that teacher, I'll say the word we. I <laughs> teach too. <laughs> and the same boat, right? Absolutely. And, and I'll say that this is one of the greatest challenges we have is to help everyone go at their own pace. Now, if we can actually use this efficient computation to assist, in some sense, providing a virtual tutor then each person will be able to see the lessons and the practice problems that are just right for them at the moment that they need them, just like if they have a tutor. Fascinating stuff. So you're building a business out of this? Is a, XP is now kind of its own company? Is that the, you're right. Uh, so, so our goal, as I said, was to somehow lift the level of mathematics and science worldwide. Uh, in order to do something at that scale, you need a lot of capital to build a platform up front. So we decided to structure this as a social enterprise. Hmm. And the business, the business aspect is to try to make sure that we can keep continually investing in the innovation that it takes to create this artificial intelligence tutor. Uh, everything I described, by the way, is accessible on the internet or on, say, on a, on a phone's web browser. But at the same time, all of what, uh, all of what we're, all of what we're uh, providing right here is actually very inexpensive to provide because mm -hmm. it's based on efficient computation. In order to sustain all of that, though, our philosophy is that there is something that people will always need to pay for, which is called other people. Okay. So we have a certain pricing philosophy. If you have something delivered by a computer, it's free. But if it's delivered by a human, you pay the human. 
Mm -hmm. So regarding how this would be able to sustain the rest of this mission that I described, we're actually going to build a part in the, in the app where you can have so when you, where you can have help from a human teacher okay. at any given moment. Or For that, you would have to pay a fee. Yeah, sure. According to the philosophy, which is that uh, whenever you have a human involved, that human expects to be compensated somehow. Sure, well, right. that makes perfect sense. I gotta ask you, what does XP mean? How'd you come up with the name of the company? And the right, so XP, we wanted a name that wasn't just an English word because this is a global product. And at that point, we were thinking of what sort of prefixes might mean something, possibly in any language. So if you think about what XP might be part of, that might be part of a word like experience, mm -hmm. or explore, or explain, mm -hmm. or expand. All these great things. Maybe explode is not the best. But <laughs> but <laughs> probably not. All of these. But so we have this, this root, which can extend to many places. Um, at the same time, I'll actually say there's a, actually a deep mathematical meaning in the word as well. Um, it's actually the most beautiful equation in mathematics. Oh, OK. Oh, I love the subtext yeah. there. That's so so that's, that's there, too. Uh, Pittsburgh, a really good place to be doing something like this? We love Pittsburgh. Yeah. So I'm a math professor at Carnegie Mellon University. And by being in Pittsburgh, we have access to some of the bleeding edge research that's going on not just at Carnegie Mellon, but at University of Pittsburgh and the other surrounding areas of higher education and, 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 and thinking. So by being in this ecosystem, we not only have that forward-looking uh, perspective, but we also have an incredible amount of talent. Our headquarters mm -hmm. is in Oakland. We're in the heart of the University of Pittsburgh. And as such, we have the pleasure of working with 10 uh, student interns from University of Pittsburgh and Carnegie Mellon at any given time. This combination of talent and also access to the kinds of thinking of the future are a very unusual recipe that make this a wonderful place to lead uh, innovations in education. Wow. Well, I'm so exciting to see this happening here in our region. I assume you've got a website if you do this. XP.com, right? That's right. EXPII.com, e right? right. Po Shen Lo, congratulations. Good luck with this venture and educating the world. Thank you very much. Yeah. Pleasure to be here. Appreciate it, yeah. Next up, talented young people are doing more than imagining careers. They're thinking about what makes a great place to work, too. Uh, we'll find out why that matters to employers when our region's business returns. Stay with us.